morning and praise the Lord. I hope you are doing good, the Lord. Once again, God has prepared a table for us, and it is my desire that you are ready to partake from the table of the Lord. I am delighted this morning to share the word of God, and it is my hope that it will transform our lives. And I would request you to open your mind that you may hear what God has for us this morning. Let us pray even as we start. Our God and our Father, we thank you, we exhort you, and we magnify the name this morning, Abba Father. Thank you because of the gift of life that you have given unto us, O God. Receive all the glory and honor, Abba Father. Receive all the adoration this morning, Abba Father. As we are going to reason from you, Abba Father, it is my desire that Jehovah God, you shall open up our mind, that we shall perceive and understand your will concerning our lives, O God. I give myself as a vessel, O God. May you use me for the glory and honor of your name. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Today I'm going to share from a topic by the title Divine Connection. Uh, we heard about destiny hijackers, and it is good after we have realized that some people hijack our destiny. It is good now we know how to connect ourselves to God, and even also to ask God to help us to be connected with people who carry our destiny. And I would uh, start by defining the word divine, and divine means things that are from God things that are of God, things that comes from the Lord, and connection from the English dictionary, it means a relationship in which a person, thing, or idea is linked or associated with something else. Therefore, divine connection means associated with God, having things that are from God. And as we are going to see from the Bible, we will realize that there are things that are connected from the Lord to us. There are people who are brought our way from God that they may connect us to our destiny. For the Bible says that for in him we live and move and have our being. That is the book of Acts chapter number 17 verse 28 part A. For in him we live move and have our being. And I thank God because of what the psalmist says in Psalms chapter number one, that blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord and his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, he, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither, whatever he does prospers. That is what the Bible says, that blessed is such a man who does not walk, stand, or sit in the seat of mockers. And it is my desire that your association will come from the Lord. People who call you call your friend, they will be divinely connected to you because our God is faithful. How I desire that even as you are going to look uh, some examples from the Bible who are divinely connected and it is for sure that them that are connected uh, to God and they were connected through the able hand of God. They prospered. And it is my desire that even you, you will pray that God will divinely connect you with people who carry your destiny. We'll start by reading the book of Job, Job chapter number one. And I'll read from verses eight. This is what the Bible says. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. Does Job fear God for nothing? Satan replied. We have seen seven lessons from that scripture that God considered Job to be his servant. Again, there was no one like Job on earth. That is what God is saying. He also goes ahead by saying that he was blameless. He was upright. 
He feared God. He shunned evil. He feared God for nothing. And the question that you are supposed to ask yourself, what do you fear God for? Is it because of the things that you want him to do? Is it because of your father? Is it because of your mother? What do you fear God for? The Bible says that God feared, uh, Job feared God for nothing. And these lessons that we are learning from that reading, it is for sure that God had chosen Job. And Job was divinely connected to God. And that's why he prospered. I know there is this scripture that we like reading, that there is hope even after a tree has been cut. But you have, have you ever asked yourself what had happened before that scripture was written? It is my desire that when God is looking from above, he will see his servants. He will see people who fear him. He will see people who are blameless and upright and them that fears God for nothing. And that's why even after Satan brought some accusation about this servant of God, he could not win his soul because God had, because Job had feared God. And as the Bible has said, that he feared God for nothing. No, there are some things that we are struggling with simply because we have not aligned ourselves into the will of God. And simply because, you know, this generation is the generation of know it all. You know, this generation, we assume that we know everything. And I would like us to read from the book, the same book of Job, chapter number 8, and I'll start from verse 7. This is what the Bible, the Bible says, Job 8, verse 7. Your beginnings will seem humble, so prosperous your future be. Ask the former generation and find what their fathers learned. For we were born only yesterday and know nothing. And our days on earth are but a shadow. Will they not instruct you and tell you? Will they not bring forth words from the understanding? Can papyrus grow tall when there, there is no marsh? Can reeds thrive without water? You see from this reading, it is for sure there are some things that we, don't, we do not know. And these things are locked up in some people. And the Bible says that we should inquire. We should ask from the former generation. And we'll find out things that they learned from their father. They'll speak things from their heart. They'll instruct us from their heart. Things that they have understanding of things that they have experienced. But because this generation is the generation of know it all, we assume that we know everything. But let me admit this to you, that until you meet a certain person, your future will not be great until you are divinely connected to that person. Ask me of those people who are great, even their testimony is connected to a certain person. It is my desire that we are going to change our mentality, that God will have mercy upon us, that we desire to be divinely connected to him. And as I've said, every great man is a product of reference. Mention those people that you admire. Mention those people that you look forward as, the, as your role model. They are a product of reference. And I would like us also to read the book of 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter number 2. And I will read from verse 9. This is what the Bible says. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what can I do for you before I am taken from you. Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit Elisha replied, You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah said, Yet if you see me when I'm taken from you, it will be yours, otherwise not. You see here, this man by the name Elisha knew one thing 
that his destiny was locked in the life of Elijah. And if you read from uh, the previous chapter, that is 1 King, 1 King chapter number 19, verse 21, this is what the Bible says. So Elisha left him and went back. He took his yoke of oxen and slaughtered them. He burned the plowing equipment to cook the meat and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he set out to follow Elijah and become, became his attendant. You know, the destiny of this great man of God, Elisha, was locked in the, in the, in the servant of God, Elijah. And that's why he is deciding, I will leave everything that I was doing and I will follow this man because I want my destiny to be great. And because I know that, that my destiny is locked in his life, I am going to follow him. Whatever it takes, I must follow him. Even if Elijah told him, do not follow me, but he decided, he purposed, even this machine that I've been working with, I'm going to destroy it. I'm going to do a sacrifice. I want to receive a double portion of your spirit. And as you can read from the scripture, Elisha was able to do four more miracles than his mentor, Elijah. Simply because he aligned himself into the will of God. He followed his master. He followed his mentor and inquired of him, what can I do in such a thing? What am I supposed to do? And God granted his wish. How I desire you young person that you are listening to me, that you are going to lower your ego and ask the, the almighty God to direct you to connect you with a person who carries your destiny. I know there are them who are called to servant to. I know there are them who have a calling, but because they are so proud, they cannot humble themselves. They cannot serve under a person. They cannot serve under their pastor. They are not doing the will of God. And even their ministry is shaking simply because they don't want to be divinely connected. They are them who are anointed, worship ministers. You go to, from this church to the other. I know even there are those that are keyboardists, the pianists. You cannot submit to, you, to the man of God that God has brought your way. It is my desire that you would be divinely connected. It is my desire that you are going to change your mentality. Look at what Elisha is doing here. Even when master, his master is telling him, no, do not follow me because God is about to take me. I'm about to go to heaven. You just remain with whatever you are doing. But he was purposed. He said, I'm going to follow you. I'm going to follow because there is something that I want to receive from you. If Eli Elisha was like us, he could not have done what he did. God could not have used him. My brother, my sister, I am feeling compelled to speak to that worshiper. I know you have been anointed. You have a good voice. God has blessed you. But it calls upon you to be submissive and inquire of the Lord. Who is that person that is calling my destiny? Who is that person that is going to connect me with my future, with my destiny? And as we saw from the, 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 the sermon, Destiny Hijackers, even us, we can be our own Destiny Hijackers because we saw whatever happened to King Solomon. God, after giving him the name Jedidiah, he never called himself by that name. And in so doing, he died an idol worshiper. He hijacked his own destiny. And that is the same case that can happen to us. You can hijack your destiny. It is my desire that you desire to be divinely connected to the will of God. Another example that we are going to see from the Bible is Jesus and his disciples. The disciples, some were fishermen, others were tax, tax collectors, but when they were divinely connected to Jesus Christ, we are seeing whatever they are doing. They are doing exploits. 
simply because they align themselves to the will of God and through divine connection, God connected them and they are doing great things. When you read from the book of Acts, you'll see the things that Peter is doing. Peter who was, you know, Peter was a character that you could not understand. Today you would say this, the other day you would say this, but when they were divinely connected to Christ Jesus, and even after the accession of Jesus Christ, when he sent the helper to them, his life is transformed. He becomes a great minister. He shares the gospel with boldness and tenacity. He could not be ashamed of the gospel simply because he was divinely connected. And that is the same case that can happen to us. You who has a calling, and you know that. You who has a deposit of God in you. God has called you to servanthood. He has given you that gift. But unless you align yourself into the will of God, you will not do the purpose and the will of God. If the disciples did not follow Jesus fully with their heart, if they did not follow him, if they did not listen to him, because after Jesus died, he came and he gave them some instruction. Do not leave Jerusalem until you receive a helper. After they received the instruction and followed what their master had taught them, look at what, what happens. You know, the book of John, John chapter number 14, verses 12. This is what the Bible says. I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have, I have been doing. He will do even greater things than this because I am going to the Father. Look at what Jesus is telling them. You have been walking with me. You have seen me do great things. You have seen me do miracles. But I tell you, whoever will have faith in me will do these things and even greater things than the ones that I did. And because the disciples heed to that will, heed to those words of their master, because they were divinely connected to Jesus Christ, what happens in the book of Acts? We see they are just walking in the streets and people are laying sick people that their shadows will heal them. Where is it recorded in the, in the gospel that the shadow of Jesus healed a sick person? Even if Apostle John is saying that he did many things that even if it was recorded, it cannot, feel, it cannot fit the whole world. The books cannot. But there is nowhere we are reading that the shadow of Jesus hid a sick person. The great things that Jesus told them, that when you align yourself into the will of God, when you have faith in me, you do even greater things than the ones that I did. It is also recorded, even the handkerchief. No apostle, Peter and the disciples would just give handkerchief to sick people, and through that they will receive their healing, simply because they were divinely connected. You worshiper that you are there, you need to be divinely connected. You need to align yourself into the will of God. The instrumentalist, God has given you the skills. God has anointed you. He has given you those skills. But unless you align yourself into the will of God, you will continue doing dramas. Simply because you don't want to align yourself into the will of God. How I desire that God will divinely connect us to his will. The disciples could do whatever they did simply because they aligned themselves into the will of God. Look at Moses and Joshua. Though Moses did not reach to the promised land Canaan, he saw it from a distance. That is what the Bible says. But because he, was, he had walked closely with his mentee, Joshua, Joshua was able to be used of God. And after being used of God, 
The Israelites settled in the promised land. Divine connection. What, who, who, who is that person that you're calling your friend? Apostle Paul and Timothy. Paul decides to mentor his son Timothy. He uses him in a mighty way. And God uses him in a mighty way because he aligned himself into the will of God. His destiny was locked in his spiritual father, Paul. And after following the instruction, he was mentored. And what happens? God used him. So it is very clear that our destiny is locked in another, in another person. And not unless you meet with that person, your future will not be great. Your future will not be colorful. It is my desire that today God will help us and open our eyes that we'll see that which he wants us to see. Sometimes I feel bad when I see young men doing whatever they are doing. After God has chosen you, after God has anointed you, you start associating with people, people who don't have anything to add to your life, people who cannot add any value to you. And at the end, what comes? You start going away from the will of God. And before you realize, your destiny has been hijacked. It is my desire that those people that we are associating with, they shall help to add value to our lives. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians that bad company, bad company corrupts good morals. But I, I would say, if bad company corrupts good morals, what do good company do? It perfects your morals. So you need to associate with people who are adding value to your life. But that cannot happen if you do not align yourself to the will of God. Because God knows who carries your destiny. God knows who is to take you to another level. We say that when God is in the business of lifting men, he anoints people to come and take you to the next level. The same case, the enemy knows when God is lifting, is anointing men to take you to another level. He also anoints people to hijack your destiny. It is my desire that God will give us the spirit of discernment that will know that which is the will of God. Look at what happens to the life of Ruth. Even after the death of her husband, she knew my destiny is locked up in the life of my mother-in-law. And even though she is telling us not to follow her, I'm not going to turn back. I want to go to my destiny. And after she did that, what happens? She is in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Simply because she humbled herself. And as I said, that some of us look for an opportunity. You saw what happened to the life of Joseph when Potiphar's wife is telling him, you need to come to bed with me. He did not see it as an opportunity to sin, but he desired and he decided in his life, I know my destiny is locked up somewhere and I cannot terminate it. I cannot hijack my own destiny. I will continue aligning myself to this servant, to Potiphar, because he has entrusted me with many things. I will not do such a thing and sin against him and even sin against my God. But some of us look for such opportunities to just sin against your God. To have a divine connection, you must be divinely connected to God. And we are going to see some two examples that can help us 
to have a divine connection with our God. And one thing is prayer. Being prayerful. Because we see the life of Jesus. He would always isolate himself. He would always wake up very early in the morning to pray. And he was God. Don't forget that. But because he wanted his destiny to be, to be great. And that's why it is recorded that God gave him a name that is above other names. And at a mention of his name, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is the Lord. He knew that. He knew his position in heaven. And that's why always he would, divine, he would seek for that divine connection. He would seek for the will of God. He would inquire of the Lord. Read your Bible. Luke chapter number 5. You will see even before he went to choose the five first disciples, he went for prayers. He prayed. He inquired of the Lord. Should I go? Who is that person that I'm, going, that I'm supposed to walk with? He inquired of the Lord. For you to be divinely connected, you have to be prayerful. You have to seek that from the Lord. Our master was very much prayerful. Look at the life of Elijah. He was prayerful. And the Bible says, Elijah was a man like us. Yet he prayed. Pervent prayers that he could not lay in for three and a half years. The same case can happen to us. If to be a, we, we are to be aligned into the will of God, we must sacrifice. We must sacrifice that sleep to seek the law. You must be prayerful. You cannot be divinely connected if you are not speaking to your master. Prayers are very essential. Look at the life of Job. He was prayerful. And that's why even after a destiny hijacker who is very close to him, he's telling, her, he's telling him that you need to cast this God. You need to cast this God and just die. We say that destiny hijackers are people who are very close to us. The wife of Job wanted to be used of the enemy. And that's why she was telling Job, cast God and just die. But because the man Job was prayerful, that's why we got some lesson from him. He was blameless. He feared God for nothing. Some of us are fearing God because you fear to die. And that's why you don't seek him. You just live a normal life. You don't want to go an extra mile and to seek the connection of God. You ought to be prayerful. The other thing that we are supposed to do is reading the word of God. Job knew who he was. He knew the promises of God. God could not forsake him. And that's why we read the word of God. And I would like us to read from the book of Psalms. Psalms chapter number, chapter number 19. And this is what the Bible says. Psalms 19. And I will read from verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The command, commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are sure, and altogether righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the comb. You see what the Bible is saying? I love the word of God. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. You know, some of us, our destinies are terminated because of what we are going through in life. You are very down. You don't know what to do. You are locked up in a situation, in a dilemma. You are in a situation of being indifferent. You don't know what to do. And now you seek for counsel from long men. And for sure. 
And that is what happens to most of ladies. When you are very down, you don't know what to do. And a guy comes here to hijack your destiny. And because you don't have the spirit of discernment, what happens? Become pregnant. You drop out from your school. You don't want even to meet your pastor because of you are shameful. Some even lose their virginity because of that. You are very down. But the Bible says the law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. When you are down, when you read the word of God, it will revive your soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy. I love that. Making wise the simple. You know, there are things that seem to be good in our eyes, but as the Bible says, they lead to destruction. You say, ah, it is not a must. I do a church wedding. I can just go and be married just like that. And in so doing, you hijack your destiny. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy. Making wise the simple. You'll always inquire of the Lord. God, in such a situation, what am I supposed to do? You not go running for wrong counsel from evil men. The Bible says, the precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. Oh, I love that. When you are down, when you read the word of God, through his word, it will revive your soul. It will give you counsel. And as the Bible says, that the precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. And the commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes when you're in darkness. When you read the word of God, seeking for that divine connection, surely God will connect you. And that verse 9, the Bible says, The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are sure and altogether righteous. Look at verse 10. They are more precious than gold. It does not stop there. Than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey. That is not enough. Than honey from the comb. If you have ever tested honey from the comb, you know what the Bible is saying. When you align yourself to the will of God, you read the word of God, it gives you joy. It revives your soul. It gives you light. You start seeing the will of God upon your life. And it is my desire. Them that are listening to me, and in one way or another, your destiny was hijacked. All is not lost. You can align yourself into the will of God. Instead of just staying at that mud after falling, you stand and say, I know who I am. I know my future is great. And as the Bible says that we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a people belonging to God. You stand up and say, now I'll take courage. I want to align myself into the will of God. I want to make my destiny to be great. I love the word of God. And the Bible says in verse 11, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. In keeping the law of the Lord, in keeping the precepts of the law, in keeping the ordinances of the law, there is a reward. And to us who are born again, we know that our reward is great in heaven. It is my desire that we would align ourselves who will seek for that divine connection that God will align us to his will in our life. And uh, as I said, until you meet a certain person, that is what we are calling a destiny connector, your future will not be great. And every testimony can be traceable to a certain human being. 
when you hear people saying, my life was like this 10 years ago, but after I met a certain person, my life changed. Simply because it was divine. God knew in such a time, because this person has been praying, I need to bring someone in their life to connect them with their destiny. You can never give a testimony without connecting it to other person. There is a man you meet, then you meet your testimony. And that is the desire of my heart. That will seek for divine connection. And we have seen through prayers and reading the word of God. And being in the right counsel. When you seek, the, when you seek divine connection, God will surely connect you with people who carry your destiny. And one Apostle Mayanja, in his sermon, touching the old bones, this is what he said. There is nothing you are looking for that is in heaven. Your greatness is not in heaven. Everything that you are looking for is locked up in a certain man or a woman. And the day you will meet that man, your life will be better and you will suffer less. Your future is not in heaven, it is locked in a certain man. And when you connect yourself with that person, things move from worst to best. And it is my desire, as we are saying, it is only God who can connect us to people who are carrying our destiny. And I'll repeat what I said. Every great man is a product of reflex. But I will also say, there is somewhere to start. You must start from somewhere. And now I'm addressing them that have not born again. I know you can tell, tell me, Jotham, there are some people who are great and they are not born again. But I will tell you and confidently tell you their future is not great. They don't have a future. They are going nowhere. Until you meet with the man Jesus Christ, your future cannot be great. And now, I want us to read from the book of John, chapter number 3, verse 14. This is what the Bible says. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Eternal life is only found in Christ Jesus. And as the Bible says, just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted for your future to be great, for you to be divinely connected. This is where it begins. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. It is only through Christ Jesus that your future can be great. And as we have said, show me a person who is great, who is not a product of reference. We have looked from some, some examples from the Bible. Men who are divinely connected and their future or are great. Apostle Paul to reach a place of saying, for me to live is gain. For me to die is gain. Because he had aligned himself in the will of God. He knew where he was going. He knew that his destiny is great. And that's why my brother, my sister, you need to align yourself into the will of God. Some of us, we are hijacking our destiny. Though God sent his only begotten son that he may come and die on the cross because of us, we are still saying, I don't want my future to be great. We have seen after the disciples aligned themselves in the will of God and walked closely with Jesus Christ, their master. Their destiny was great. Even if they died painful death, they knew their future is great. Until you meet with the man Jesus, your future will not be great. 
until you align yourself into the will of God, your future will not be great. And I'm not condemning anyone. The Bible says in verse 17, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. He did not come to tell you how sinful you are. You might be a prostitute for 20 years, but Jesus did not come to show you how sinful you are. You might be a drug addict for 10 years, but Jesus did not come to show you how sinful you are. You might be an addict of watching pornography and even masturbation, but Jesus did not come to show you how sinful you are. But he came that you may have life through him, and you may be saved through him. The Bible says in verse 18, whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only son. And that's what I'm saying. Whoever has not received Christ Jesus, their future is not great. They don't have a future. The Bible says they stand condemned already simply because they don't want that divine connection. It is until you receive Christ Jesus, your future will be great. You can be a billionaire, a millionaire, but without having Christ Jesus in your life, your future is not great. Verse 19, this is what the Bible says. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. That is the verdict. Men love darkness more than they love the light, and that's why they don't want to align themselves into the will of God. That's why they don't want to welcome Christ Jesus in their lives. Verse 20. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God. Don't forget what we said. John chapter 10 verse 10. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came that we may have life and have it in abundance. It is upon you, my brother, my sister, to align yourself into the will of God, to welcome Christ Jesus in your heart. He is knocking at the door of your heart. My daughter, my son, I want to make your future to be great. And I'm not only speaking to young people here. Even you, mother, my daddy who is listening to me, if you have not welcomed Christ Jesus in your heart, your future is not great. And you might tell me, I have seen many things. You are very young. What are you telling me? But I'll confidently tell you, your future will not be great, not unless you welcome Christ Jesus in your heart. If we are to do the will of God and to do the purpose that God created us for, we must welcome Christ Jesus in our hearts, that he may be the Lord and Savior of our hearts. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, we thank you and we exhort you. You are a faithful God and there is none as you are our Father. As Jehovah God, you have taught us this morning that our future is locked up in a certain person and not unless we meet with them, our future will not be great. And now again you are telling us that not unless we will come your son Jesus Christ, we cannot be divinely connected and we will not achieve the purpose that you created us for, O oh God. I thank you, my Father, because of them that have been listening to me, O oh God, and they have not surrendered their lives to you, Abba Father. I pray because you search the heart of men, O oh God. Convict them of their sins, Abba Father. Convict them, my Father, of the things that they have been doing that are detestable before you, O oh God. And they will turn their lives to you, our Father. You omnipresent God. 
your omniscient God, all knowing about Father, Jehovah God Almighty, reach them wherever they are, O God, that you may change their lives above Father. Thank you because of them that will be whispering a word of prayer to you, O God, welcoming you in their heart, Abba Father. I pray that you may transform their lives, O God, that you may change their lives, Abba Father, all for the glory and honor of your name. Receive all the glory and honor. Receive all the adoration, O God. Thank you because of using me as your vessel. Receive all the glory because you are a faithful God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I pray. Amen. Shalom. God bless you.